Thank you for tuning in to Love in Your Hands with Cynthia Clark, the podcast about how to live life with love, passion, and purpose. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to heal your emotional past, identify real compatibility, and find long-lasting love through the merging of ancient science, modern technology, and quantum physics. Tired of superficial connections? Start your free Soulmate Connection membership today at loveinyourhands.com. Now here's your host, Cynthia Clark, palm reading consultant, compatibility expert, and heart harmonizer. Hi, thanks everybody for joining us today. This is Cynthia Clark, and I'm always excited to share ways that we can bring in more love, more passion, and more purpose into the world. I have a really exciting guest I'm bringing in today, so I can't wait to introduce her. And I want to start out with a little palm reading lesson. Of course, that is my thing. And I want to introduce to you the healing stigmata. Uh, a lot of people out there are in the world of, uh, you know, maybe you're in the traditional world of going to the doctor and, you know, getting your medicine and whatever. Uh, or maybe you're on the total other side of the spectrum. You're into more of the energy work and, and healing and that sort of thing. And I personally like to, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor myself, so I don't give medical advice. <laughs> it's not my thing. But um, I think the merging of the two is actually where we can find the most benefit. So to completely ignore something that's been around for thousands of years is, in my opinion, really not the most intelligent thing to do. Um, however, it's also not intelligent to completely ignore new technology and new uh, innovations and new things that people are learning every day. So um, when we can um, understand our own bodies and the, how we heal, that's super important. Um, and there's a marker in the hands that we call the healing stigmata, which is actually a talent marker. And if you happen to have a talent marker, that is an indication that you need to use it. Okay, so not everybody uh, has talent markers, and that doesn't mean they're not talented. It just means <laughs> that they don't have that specific marker to follow. Okay, so if you do have the, a particular talent marker, it means that it want, it, that marker wants to be used. Okay, so the healing stigmata is located in your palm and it's going to be underneath your little finger. Okay, so your little finger we call Mercury, named after the Roman god Mercury, who was also in charge of healing. And you're going to be looking for little vertical lines that are going to be underneath this finger and they're going to be lined up like little soldiers okay so we want to take a look at that and you should have four or more of these lines to be considered healing stigmata now by the way if they show up on just your passive hand in other words in other words the hand that you don't write with that will show up as a potential for you to develop something that's not fully developed yet and if it shows up on your active hand, it means that it's ready to go, ready to be used, wants to be used, okay? So uh, another thing, okay, so let's say you have that, you know, I would highly recommend that you um, take a look at, you know, what kind of healer are you? What kind of outlet do you need? Uh, that sort of thing. It's, it's going to be part of our discussion today, so uh, very exciting. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is just how do we tap into our own healing powers. And, you know, this is something I've been working on for about 20 years now, so I'm really passionate about it. And I've actually healed myself more than once using nothing but myself, <laughs> which is amazing when you think about that. So I want you to start thinking about that as well, that you can heal yourself. You don't need necessarily anybody else to do it for you you don't you know i mean it's every situation is different obviously if you're bleeding you know go get it taken care of <laughs> but this is um this is just to introduce you to the power of healing and self-healing so there's a process that i like to do with people called 
uh, tuning in with a mudra. And a lot of people have heard of mantras, which is of course where we chant something like Om. Uh, you know, mantras are very powerful using our voice. Uh, but we also have what's called a mudra, and a mudra is a hand position. And what it does is it taps into a different energy to connect us to different, um, different aspects of our consciousness. Okay, so you can think of like our archetypes represent the subconscious influences. And there's actually 22 different archetypes that we can tap into, at least that I teach. And so I wanted to kind of introduce you to uh, one that we call strength. And the strength archetype is to get us in touch with our own higher self, our own uh, compassionate self. And uh, how we do that is we actually take that, uh, okay, take your hand here, and we're gonna take our Jupiter finger, okay, which is our index finger, we're gonna put it on that mount. So right where that healing stigmata would be, we're gonna put it there. And then we're gonna flip around and we're gonna do the same thing with the other hand so that both Jupiter fingers are touching both Mercury mounts. Okay, like that. And just hold that position for a second. Take a deep breath in. Connect to the power of strength, the strength archetype. And then you can exhale. Okay, how does that feel, everybody? Feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, sometimes just doing this can open up a whole new world for you. So anyway, that is today's palm reading lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. You can go ahead and release that. And now I'm gonna introduce our very special guest. We have Kira Polson, who is a mother to five amazing kids. She is also an inspirational speaker, a published author, a mastermind leader, and a product designer. Wow, that is just amazing. Uh, Kira is an intuitive, energetic healer and the founder and creator of the Awaken program. So I want to hear all about that. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. So, so tell us a little bit about how you got into doing all of this stuff that you do. It's just amazing. A lot of people think, wow, five kids, how do you do it all? <laughs> right. And that's probably one of my favorite um, things to talk about is because I think a lot of people believe that they don't have enough time to follow their purpose, to follow their dreams. And I love being able to share that even with five young children, I am so capable of doing all the things my soul calls me forward to. And that, and, and I believe that's for everyone. Everyone can do that. Um, for me, how I began all this work was uh, my parents are actually both healers. Um, and so I would, was raised in a home of healing. And um, my mom stepped into it a little bit later on in life, but I think she just always was a healer. But my dad just always did healing work with us. And it, and it was like I got to be a pupil to this very wise healer my whole entire life. And then when he opened up a school eight years ago, of course I was one of his first students and it led me into the world of energy healing. And then my mom became an energetic master healer and she also trained me in her work. And then I just kind of birthed my own work out of my own talents and gifts, right? So that led me, I feel like it was just one of those very lucky experiences that I was blessed to be in a family where that was the listening in our home. Wow, that's awesome. And I, I'm one of those people who believes we choose our parents. Yes. Yes. I think we come in, you know, when we're a soul, you know, before we incarnate into our body, I feel like we plan who, like what family are we going to go into and, and what are the lessons that are going to be there and, and the, the very young environment I think is so important. So yeah. what a gift I'm sure that you're giving to your kids. Yeah. <laughs> they grow up in a pretty weird house over here. <laughs> I, have a, I have a bunch of teenage boys and they'll come into, I have a sacred space in my home that's a closet and it has all of my sacred things. I go in there and that's where I talk to God. That's where I do my healing work. And it's got crystals everywhere and all the things. And my teenage boys will sneak in while I'm meditating and they 
play with all my crystals and they think it's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's a strange world that I've raised them in and it's such a beautiful world, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, I've got a bunch of crystals on my desk right here. <laughs> I've, got the, I've got this beautiful clear quartz. Wow. I just picked this one up. Isn't it lovely? Oh, it's so magical. I know. It's got so many like little inclusions and stuff. Mm. And then um, I've got this little piece of halite, which is this little guy here. Halite. And then I've also got this uh, Botswana agate. Wow. So these are these are just on this desk. I've got even more on my other desk. Right? <laughs> They're everywhere. They're yeah. everywhere. No. yeah. Now that I'm in Sedona, I'm constantly picking up crystals. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that you live in Sedona. Yes, I moved to Sedona uh, just this year. So yeah, I love it here. It's the most like magical place. <laughs> it is. I live three hours from Sedona, so I go there often because it is my happy place. So oh, it's yeah, cool. it's very magical. Mm. So, so tell us a little bit about your jewel. Since we're on the topic of crystals, tell us about your jewelry. So, so I was going to show you. I have this amazing piece of white buffalo. This is one of the stones in my jewelry. So I have this crazy obsession with turquoise. I've always had it. It's, it's one of those things where literally I feel like I could swim in it and it would bring me the most joy ever. I have no idea why, but it just calls to my soul. And a year and a half ago, I, I was meditating and I had this vision of these bracelets that had turquoise on them and had words connected to them. And I tried to make it happen. And you know, if you ever force an idea, it doesn't work so well. So then I just handed it over to the divine. And um, a few months later, I have a client who owns one of the most spectacular turquoise mines there is. Like they, wow. it's, a, it's an extraordinary mine in Nevada. Oh no, just kidding. It's in New Mexico. And they have Poseidon. They have like four different types of turquoise and the white buffalo. So it's a very special mine. And she called me and said, I found the jeweler for you and you're welcome to purchase our stones. And so it was like, how do you say no? And so uh, within a few weeks, everything had been sent over. My jeweler got me all of the jewelry back within, I think, three months. So it was very fast. And then I just held each piece and I just prayed that I would know what words needed to come for each uh, bracelet. And so they all have their own powerful mantras that go with them. Plus I energetically restore the bracelets when they come back. So I do some energetic cleaning on them. I restore them so that these turquoise stones, these Poseidon stones, white buffalo really function in their highest level. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're actually just like remembrances. That's what I call them. So when mm -hmm. you wear them, every time you see it, it's just a remembrance of your divinity because life gets messy, we have a lot of distractions, we get stuck in our humanity, and we get stuck in this illusion of like we are our bodies. Mm -hmm. And the bracelets are a reminder that we're like so much greater and we have like extraordinary work to do. Mm. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love them, they're so beautiful. Now, are they uh, just for women or do you make them for men as well? I haven't made them for men yet. So we're kind of still in the, the birthing stage of this jewelry. So I only have three um, styles right now, but they all come in turquoise, Poseidon, and white buffalo. I'm sure a man could wear them. I created them very simple. So I love clean and clear lines. And so they're not in any way decorative like most turquoise has a lot of like um you know the carvings and all the different things these are actually just really clean simple lines so i actually think a man could wear one and it wouldn't look feminine hmm. okay yeah yeah i'm just thinking about my brother who loves wearing turquoise mm. and he looks amazing in turquoise <laughs> so it's like one of his favorite things uh, so he, it probably calls to him as well. So, right. Oh yeah. yes. I would love to have him look at it. It's, it's just been such, it's always a joy to be given inspiration and then to see it be birthed. Like for me mm -hmm. that, like, I don't think there's anything that brings me more joy 
than to see inspiration show up here on earth in, in a form. Mm. So on that topic, how do you, how do people get inspiration? You know, mm. so like you said, they're stuck in their gunk, <laughs> you know, they're struggling. They're not, uh, you know, maybe they're not even thinking about it. Um, how do we open up to that? Cause that to me, I agree. I think it's just one of the best things ever. Yes. And this is probably, this is probably my favorite topic. Um, I'm actually writing my new book. It should be out spring 2020. It's called rise up and awaken a guide to creating sacred space. Mm -hmm. So I believe that when we make sacred space in our lives, in our homes, we can then commune with the divine, which allows us to be open to receive. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, find a place in your house that you can clear it of anything and everything that's worldly and place in it everything that feels sacred to you. So I emptied a closet that just kind of had a bunch of not, not important stuff. We actually didn't need a lot of it. It was just storage kind of thing. I cleared it out. And, um, I actually energetically restored it, which anyone can do. All you have to do is ask light to be poured through the walls and the ceilings and the floors and, and ask it to just be restored through light. And then I placed all my favorite things in it. And as soon as I created that, now it's where I go to commune. It's now where I go to quiet my inner self, to talk to the divine, talk to God, and then listen. It's where I journal. And that, when you can carve a place like that, like a physical form, you can't help but receive. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. So what if somebody lives in a, in a small space? You know, yes. what, what would you suggest for, the, for them? So I have a client who does. And so what we did is we just kind of picked a corner in her room um, where she has some pillows there. She has like a little tiny, like kind of a small little stand where she keeps a candle and some of her crystals and like a book. And she then goes and sits there to do her sp spiritual sacred work. And so it doesn't actually have to be a room if you don't have a closet or anything like that. But if you can just set it up and then create the intention, like dedicate this to my sacred work. This is where I go to meet my divine self and then really commit to doing that. I, I say do it every morning. Our, when we wake up, we're super close to our subconscious, which means we're way more attuned to receiving. So if you commit to going there first thing in the morning, you're going to receive because you're still in a bit of a spiritual space from waking up. Right. Yeah, that makes perfect sense because you're still sort of in that kind of foggy dream space. Mm -hmm. And if we're too awake, like in the middle of the day, it's wow. like we're, you know, it seems like we're just like, okay, now I'm in my day. I'm busy. I got stuff to do. I don't know if I even have time to go do that. You know, and then even if you do, it's like it takes longer to get into the space. Agreed. So, yeah, it yeah. takes a lot of practice to be able to go in at three o'clock and wake up your divine self. Like it's like, that's like a really strong muscle to be able to pull it forward in the middle of the day. But you know, all these books, there's Napoleon Hill's book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, where he talks about putting a message up to your subconscious as you're falling asleep and then waking up and then writing. And that practice of, of starting to communicate with your, you know, we can call it subconscious. I like to call it my divine self. If I'm in that communication and I don't step into the real world yet. So no phones, no, no looking at my texts or my emails or my Facebook or whatever. I wake up and go straight to my sacred space. I always receive so much more. Mm, yes, I definitely agree. And, yeah. and it doesn't necessarily take a ton of time either. Wouldn't you say? Like if somebody only has maybe 20 minutes, yeah. would you still say that's valuable? Oh, I tell people to start with 10 because it, it's so bite sizable, right? Like, oh, I have 10 minutes in the morning. And I always just say, start with setting your alarm clock 10 minutes prior to when you would have woken up. So if you weren't normally wake up at seven, set your alarm clock at 6.50, you go straight to your sacred space and set the timer on your phone for 10 minutes and just begin there. And then 
it'll become so delicious that you'll end up adding more time because it's, it becomes like the best moment of your day. Mm, yeah. And then you start to look forward to it. Yes. Because it's like, Hey, you never know what's going to come out of it. Right? And <laughs> I've had, yeah, I've had some really cool stuff come out of my meditations. Mm -hmm. And for a while it was after I got divorced, I was starting to wake up every morning at 444 and the universe was just, and I was not a morning person back then. Mm -hmm. And it was like, why am I waking up at 444 every day? And it was like, like literally on the dot, I'd wake up 444. It's like, well, you should just get up because you're awake. And it's like, well, I should go meditate. Okay. <laughs> I ended up doing that for months after my divorce because I was so distraught. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of like I needed that time to heal and reconnect. It was so It was so interesting. It was one of the best things I could have done, though, during that period. It's so nourishing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it really did help. I think it helped me just get through the whole thing because wow. I, you know, and I swear my angels were just waking me up at that time. And four, four, like, four. Are you kidding me? That's like <laughs> that's such a magical number. <laughs> I know. It's this magical number. Exactly. And they were like, well, we're going to make sure that you have time to meditate. We're going to make sure that you don't feel rushed into your day. So we're going to make sure it's, it's nice and early for you. And I ended up doing probably an hour to two hours every morning for months. Mm. And it was, it was so nice. Cause it's like, yeah, this is exactly what I need. Wow. Cause you know, <laughs> divorces, I consider, you know, divorce to be quite traumatic, Very. even if it's amicable, it's yeah. pretty traumatic. So yeah. Oh, that's such a beautiful story. I love that. I, I say <laughs> the, I try and wake up at five, but it doesn't happen that often. I usually wake up at six, but the days that I need extra work, I say my angels wake up my five-year-old because he'll come in at four thirty, five o'clock on the days that I'm supposed to be doing extra spiritual work. And so I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you, little Jones, for being the, <laughs> the helper in this, <laughs> in this work today. Yeah, the little messenger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like my little messenger. He goes back to bed and then I just go into my sacred room. So oh, that's awesome. Pretty funny. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your mastermind and, and what have you got going on there? So one of the things that I firmly believe is that everyone has a divine purpose. Hmm. And the reason why we can't get to it is because we just have all these old belief systems, these old patterns, generational patterns that have just like gotten us so messy. And so I believe that if you can do daily healing work on yourself, you can show up better. You can be more primed in your higher vibrations and move forward in the work you're called to do. So what I've done is I've created a mastermind um, where I teach these women who all feel called to do big things, right? Like that's, a, that's part of joining the mastermind is like they know they're supposed to do something and they can't make it happen. They've been struggling with it for years. It's like not moving and I teach them how to do their daily energetic healing work. And then I support them in pulling forward all of their programs. So I help them write their digital courses, create retreats. I, have a, I actually have a publishing company so I can help them publish their work. And today I had one of my mastermind women publish her first book. And um, it's very exciting. It's That's awesome. Uh, an honor to help people bring their work forward into the world because I believe that if I can help leaders actually step forward and do their work and their leading, we can ripple light way faster. And that's really my deepest desire. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I mean, if we, yeah. And it's so interesting to think it's like a lot of people may think that they don't have anything to offer or, you know, I'm just one person. Who am I to, you know, make a difference in the world? And, and, you know, what would you say about that? Well, I feel like that's just one of the greatest lies that we deal with. We all deal with lies that come into our mind from negative thoughts and negative entities and all these things. And that's just one of the greatest lies to shut us down. So I say, if that's the lie that you hear in your mind, 
the opposite is actually what's very true. And the opposite is that you are indeed meant to do something very powerful and impactful in the world. And that's why that lie comes to you. It comes to you to hide the gifts that you're supposed to be bringing forward. So say hello to it and see it as a sign. Like, oh my gosh, I'm actually super important and I'm supposed to do such great things. Otherwise that lie wouldn't be coming to me. Mm, wow, that's so beautiful. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Right? So, yeah, everybody remember how important you are. <laughs> You're so much more important than you think. <laughs> so much more. I mean, the truth yeah. is three years ago, I felt so lost. I had achieved my dreams of being a mother and I had five beautiful kids and I was so deeply unhappy. And, and that's when my husband just inspired me. Like you need to start dreaming again. And I begged and begged and begged God for five months, show me how to dream. And mm -hmm. actually the answer to that prayer was all of my trauma memories of being sexually abused as a child came back. But mm -hmm. the gift of that was it led me into massive amounts of healing. And because I chose to heal, my gifts and my purpose were presented to me. And that's the path. The path to, in my heart and in my mind is when you decide to begin healing, you get to have your divine self kind of brought forward. Mm. So regardless of whatever we've had in our past do you feel like anybody can heal from anything i do i do i really believe that we all are healers we all have gifts of healing it's just a language that we haven't been taught hmm. yes i agree i think that's so important and yeah. we underestimate ourselves sometimes yeah so, yeah well, this has been such a great conversation. <laughs> I, I think what's interesting is we're just taught in a culture that if you're sick, you have to go outside of yourself to get better, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, you're, you have a fever. Let's go and take you to the doctor. Oh, you have a cough. Let's go and take you to the doctor. Not saying you shouldn't go to the doctor, but that's just the cultural beliefs. Right. And so we can rewire that belief and the language of like, oh, I'm sick. What is my body trying to teach me? so that I can then begin to heal. It's just a different belief system and it's just a new language. And once you start to learn it, you're able to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very true. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us a little bit about how do people work with you and how can they reach you? So um, I'm on Instagram pretty much every day at Kira Polson, and that's a great way to just kind of continue the conversations from here, but I also have a podcast called The Awakened Podcast where we talk all about awakening to our divine self. It's super fun. It's, uh, it's a joy to have those conversations with people. They're welcome to go to my website, which is super easy, kirapolson.com. And um, I definitely, I open up my mastermind every six months and I only take six women in. So it's a very in-depth personal experience. But when if you've missed the deadline of the mastermind, you can always work one-on-one -on -one with me and I help people do that. And then I teach them through my Awaken program, which is the 12 week course on how they can learn to heal themselves. So it's a really great way to just begin. If you're like, I would just love to learn a daily practice. That's what the Awaken program is. Mm, and that sounds like it'd be so life-changing yeah. for people who work with you. So that's, that's terrific. Yeah, it's an absolute joy. Okay, so before we wrap up, uh, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience that we haven't talked about? Hmm. I think the thing that stops people is that they have these fears that they're not enough. And I think just that deep realization that you are enough as you are right here, right now, is the piece that can help you move forward into the next section of your life. Just a nice remembrance that like you are all you need and you have everything you need inside of you. Mm, very beautiful. Thank you so much, Kira. This has been so mm. much fun. Yes. Uh, it's been great getting to know you better. And uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, as always, we appreciate your 
uh, feedback and we also appreciate you listening and sharing uh, whatever it is that you want us to talk about. So remember that you can live life with love, passion, and purpose. So get out there and do it and have a fantastic day. Thank you for listening to Love in Your Hands. Please rate, review, and subscribe to show your support. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to find the secret ingredients to your soulmate. Start your free Soulmate Connection membership today using the most innovative and accurate algorithm to match you to potential long-lasting love, all at loveinyourhands.com.